was only God can do it. And we know if God can't do it, then guess what? It can't be done. So we are happy that God will and God can. Because sure enough, he's the one that we go to. He's the one that we talk to. He's the one that we pray to. And he's the one that's blessing us right now and allowing us to breathe. Allowing us to have our being Allowing us to be in our right mind. So yes, only God can do it. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, we're here for another Tuesday night. We're here for some more studying and lifting up the name of Jesus and teaching and learning and, 
and all of this stuff. And it's just good. It, you know, every time you can read the word, every time you can study the word, every time you hear the word, you learn more. You get more. You get more excited. The more you read the word, the more excited you should get. The more you learn about the word, the more excited you should get. Because what? This is God's word. This is what we have to live by in order to get to heaven. It's not just going through motions and going through rituals and going through all of that. But you got to have him on the inside. He's got to reside in your heart. He's got to be a part of your everyday life. He's got to be on your mind constantly, you know, for you to be able to keep your mind stayed on Jesus. You know, they used to sing that song. I'm, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I'm walking and talking, singing and praying with my mind on Jesus. Because in this day and time, I mean, they had to keep it on there in times past. But now, hey, Karen, sweetheart, we, we got to really keep Christ on our mind. We got to keep the Lord on our mind because so much is going on and so many distractions out there, so much craziness. And it's easy for us to get our mind off of God, but we got to keep our eyes on Him because if we don't, we can get swept away and involved in all this other stuff that's going on, stuff that's not good for us, stuff that's not good for our soul. So we have to keep that in mind to keep our mind stayed on Jesus. And as the song say, only God can do it. So don't worry about it. Don't stress yourself out about it. Don't lose your mind. Don't get depressed. Give it to God and leave it there. I used to have a scene when they come to when they did the college of discipleship. I said, bring it, drop it, and walk away. It ain't your battle anyway. Why y'all keep trying to fight stuff that belongs to God? The battle is not yours. It ain't. It's the Lord. So say, God, you said in your word, you would handle this. Handle it. Please, Daddy, handle it. And leave it to him. Okay? All right. So, we're about to go into the lesson. But you know how I do? I start with prayer. All right? Amen? All right. Father God, we thank you. We love you. We honor you. We adore you. You are awesome, God. We thank you for allowing us to be here one more time. We thank you for your many blessings, Lord. We thank you for the ups. We thank you for the downs. We thank you for the good. We thank you for the bad. We thank you for the outs and the ends, the left and the right. Lord, we thank you for everything you told us in your word. In all things, give thanks. No matter what it looks like, we know that you're going to bring us out as victors at the end. Lord, we thank you for these our people who are tuned in, who will tune in later. Who will look at it on YouTube, Lord, Lord, bless each and every one. Lord, I am grateful for everyone who comes in and hangs out with me here. I'm grateful for everyone that comes and listens later. I'm grateful for the new people that I'm reaching on YouTube. Lord, we just thank you for all that you've done, you're doing, and going to do. Lord, I can't do nothing but say thank you because it's not me. It's you doing the work, Lord, but you give me what the words to say that to say to your people to help them to lift you up. And then you also lift me up while I'm lifting up your people. Lord, we ask that you right now as we go through this lesson, it's gonna be let's sticky because we're talking about the cost of discipleship. Lord, we ask that you touch everyone, touch our minds and hearts that we may understand your word and receive your word and apply your word in our everyday life. And Lord, as I teach this lesson, remove all of me. All of me. And let it be all of you. Lord, speak through these lips of clay. The words that you would have me to say. That the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. My Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Cheryl. Nice to see you. All right. Tonight's lesson we are talking about counting the cost of discipleship. Oh, counting the cost of discipleship. Have you thought about that? When you became a disciple, did you know what you were really going to be facing? Did you expect things to go great? Did you expect to keep all, you expect to keep all your family? Did you expect for everybody around you to act right? If you weren't taught, yes, you did. But if people were real and honest with you, they would let you know. And like the Bible says, it's an honor for a man to cease from strife. Proverbs 20 and 1. But every fool will be meddling. Every, it's an honor 
for you to stop sinning. It's honor for you to come out of that, come out the street, come off, the, come out that life. That simple. But it's every fool, every person that was your friend. Mm-hmm. I heard a pastor say Sunday, you you was fine as long as you was supplying the drink. They was they loved you then. As long as you was shelling out the money to take care of them, they was they was fine. But when you found Jesus and you stopped doing all that stuff, now you crazy. There's something wrong with you. Now you up here. Now you bougie. No. I just want a better life for me. I want to live a better life. I want to live a comfortable life. I want to live a peaceful life. But when you're a disciple and when you're true to God, it's going to cost you some things. Discipleship can be a very lonely road. But as long as you got God on your side, baby, you are never, ever alone. You just got to lean on them sometimes. You, sometimes you have friends and you have aces, you have best friends, you have BFFs, and you be like, oh, oh, oh. yeah. But if something going to come along, well, best friend ain't going to, I don't care how they do. You know, they might be able to pray with you. But some kind, sometimes you just got to fall on your knees and cry before God. Sometimes you got to lay out, out on the floor and go to God for what's going on. Because like I say, only God can do it. And some stuff, some hurt, some deals, some situations, can't nobody get us through but God. Nobody but God. But the subject says counting the cost of discipleship. Discipleship costs. It's some things that you're going to lose. Yeah, I go again. It's some things you're going to lose just to gain Christ. Sometimes we'll be trying to hold on so tight to stuff, people, places, and things, and they're hurting us and paining us, and we can't grow. We can't go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. We got to move. And if you have problems, let it go. Lord, help me. Let and forget about it. Huh, forget about it. Yep. Things that we let go, we need to forget about it. Because if we keep remembering it, we're going to keep visiting. And you know how you keep visiting, folks? You start feeling at home. Mm -mm, we're going to let it go and let it go on out the door. The cost of discipleship. Our listening is coming from Luke 14, 25 through 35. Luke 14, 25 through 35. Okay, we're going to read the introduction. We Christians are not to be conformed to this world in the way we think. The world by its advertisements, its conversation, and its philosophy is engaged in a gigantic brainwashing. Not only consciously, but sometimes unconsciously. The Christian is beset by secular and worldly propaganda calling us, calling us to live for ourselves and to put things in selfish pleasures ahead of God. The world's sewage system threatens to contaminate the stream of Christian thought. That's what Billy Graham said. Sometimes we as Christians, we get caught up in stuff. What the world has to offer, what's out there, what's going on. We get caught up in it. We get so wrapped up in it, we forget that there's a God. We forget that God is powerful. We forget that God can. We forget that God can deliver. God can set free. We forget those things. And we get caught up and say, oh my God, what's going to happen? Oh my God, I don't know. What's it? What's it? We start panicking. Really? Why are you panicking? Calm down. Breathe. God's got this. <clears throat> we can easily observe the influences of the world and culture around us without even realizing. At the beginning of Luke 14, we see Jesus reaching out to one who likely was overlooked or looked down on in, in society. When he did so, he was criticized by those who should have cared the most for such a person. Through, through his actions, he left us a good example of a disciple's ministry. You can read that, you know, the rest of the chapter. Uh, at a later date, okay? Counting the cost of discipleship. All right? And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brother and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Wait, what did he say? Wait. If any man come to me and hate not, what, what you, wait a minute, hate not? What, what, I mean, I can't, what's, hey, hate not his father and mother and wife and children and 
brother and sister Jay is on life so and what you mean hey I look, you told me to honor my father and my mother you told me to love my brother and my sister and you told me to lead the world and cleave my wife and the children is a blessing and you and what you said well what wait, wait what no what he's saying is you have to put me first. You can't love none of these people more than you love God. Mama, dad, sister, brother, spouse, cheer. You can't put you can't put yourself before me. So if you love any of them more than me, you can't be my disciple. I want all of you or none of you. Yes, he wants you to love your mom and dad. Yes, he does. He told you to honor them. Mm-hmm. Do that. But don't be putting mom and daddy up on a pedestal and you, you don't put God in the back row somewhere. Your husband, oh, he is the bone. He is all that. He take care of everything. He good to you. Uh, uh -huh. That's nice. Cool. God, then your husband. You got a wife? Oh, she is. Y'all don't even know. I got a Proverbs 31 woman. Some of y'all quit lying. Y'all ain't got no Proverbs 31 woman. She don't do all that. Quit lying. She just, she just virtuous, but she don't do, don't, just read it and see if she actually do all of that. Y'all quit. Okay, I don't, I don't want to something else. I just threw that in. Okay, that was free. It's all free. I'm sorry. I'm just. So, okay. Anyway, so he says, brother, sister, you can't put none of these people, none of the. Hey, Tracy, what? Bishop Brooks, hey. But you can't put none of these people before God. Take, you can love on them, you can take care of them, you can take them out to eat, you can take them shopping, you can do all that. But they cannot be more than God. They cannot be more than the Lord. The Lord is always. Hey, number one. One, number one. Okay? You don't get up in the morning, thank you, honey. No, you don't. You say, thank you, Lord. I hope so. If not, start tomorrow. I mean, at, right, I tell you what, start right now. Katie, in. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. All right. Here we go. But it say, you can't be, okay. You got to hate you. Your life. Not hate you. You got to love yourself. But I'm saying, don't put yourself before the Lord. That's all I'm saying. He number one. All right? Okay. All right. It said, for whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. What is a cross? A cross is a burden. A cross is trouble. A cross is tough times. A cross is loss of friends. A cross is loss of loss of loved ones. A cross is a loss of a husband. Oops. I know. A, a, a wife. A, sometimes your charity gonna go crazy. Well, they don't want you love Jesus. Who? And they're gonna give you all kind of problems. But it's some things that you're gonna have to bear because you said yes to the Lord. Everybody didn't I had to tell a friend. She thought because she got saved, her whole house. They was going to start walking right there. They was going to start doing what Jesus said. And they was just going to bow down. They was, I said, baby, hold on. <laughs> you got saved. They didn't. Now, you got to pray them on until they get there. I said, and you got to act right. You can't go to church and then come home and cuss them out. No, no, that's not going to work. Okay, so when you get saved, it. Understand that you the only one that got saved. It, okay? So then you got to pray through the process and then, you know, take care of what you need to take care of after that. Okay? But you got to bear your cross because it's a daily cross that you got to bear. You got to bear some. It's some folks that's going to walk away from you. That's been your friend for 20, 30 years and they say you want Jesus. You for real? You know, <laughs> people kill me with this. You got to have a balanced life, which means... You can do for the Lord and do some sin, but make sure, you know, it, it's it's equal. It's it's no, wait a minute. What? <laughs> okay. I see you in hell with your balanced life. Uh oh, did I say that I lie? Okay, okay. 
So you better start acting right and give it to the Lord. That includes me too. I got to do this daily. I say, Lord, now, Lord, <laughs> touch me. Daily. Mm -hmm, that's what it is. All right. For which of you, now here we go, intended to build a tower, sit it not down first and count up the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it. You got $45.15 in a bank. $2.12 in your in your uh in your wallet. And you say, I'm finna build a house. Now, hey, look, let me I know God, I know how God works. And you can say, God, I'm going to believe you. I'm going to trust in you. And I know you're going to... I'm not talking about that person. I'm talking about that person that's just blind. Don't even know. Just trying to tell my well, you know, good. I'm a, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put $2 over here. Then I'm going to put 2 No, you got to count the cost. You got to study. You can't just go buy some. You got to figure out, can you pay... Especially if you put it on a payment plan. Huh? You got to make sure you can keep those payments up. Hmm? Don't be trying to, you know, <laughs> buy CEO stuff when you are at entry level. Stop do don't, don't do it. You're going to end up in a situation that you don't want to be in and then you're going to be trying to hide from folks because you can't, you didn't do what you're supposed to do. And, you know, you can't answer the phone. So make sure when you get something, you can handle it. Okay? All right. And don't be letting folks talk you into doing more than you know you can. Because when I was ready to buy my house, they said, well, how much you looking to, to spend a month? And I told her, she said, well, you know, I said, okay, uh-huh, that may be it, but that's what I'm doing. And she couldn't change my mind. I was like, uh-uh, I'm not, because I was renting before. And I said, I'm not going too much further than what I was renting. So don't even play. Hey, Shamika. So keep, you know, stay where you can be. Stay where you're comfortable. Stay what you, do what you know. Live like somebody else that you don't even know what they did. They might have hooked and crooked and, I mean, <laughs> pimped and, pro you know, all that to get what they got. So don't be trying to follow folk, you know. You, folks that you see that kind of, you know, they got it together. You can go talk to them and ask them, you know, how did you get this, that, and other, and everything, that, whatever. Okay, so, you know, but do don't be trying, oh, look, see that? I know if they can get that, I know I can get it. Don't, just make sure you talk to the Lord first. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then, write down your plan. How you gonna do that? Mm-hmm. I didn't pay nobody to fix my credit. I ain't knocking nobody that do. I didn't pay nobody to fix my credit. I looked at my credit report. I paid my bills. I'm in a house. I'm just saying. You know, I mean, you, some people won't do that. I said, uh-uh. If I had money to pay you to fix my credit, I wouldn't have. I'm just saying. But I I needed to do. Because I told the Lord, I said, Lord, this is what I want. I need to know how to do it. God gave me some insight. God told me who to talk to. Gave me who to talk to. Got my information. Got everything lined up. Bang. I'm good. Because I did it the way the Lord told me to do it. That's how we can get ahead. When we give... When we give to the Lord, we do what the Lord tells us to do, and God will reward us. It say you build, you sit down, you want to build a tower, a house, or whatever, you count the cost. Count the cost. See if you can afford it. Mm. Don't be trying, don't be trying to acquire stuff and you're temporary. And when you become full-time, stay on there. Huh? Come on now. You want to follow folk and folk won't follow the fuck. You said that shit. Come on with it now. Say you want to be like these people want to be. You, no, make sure you can handle what you're trying to do. Don't be that. Lit. Huh? At your wage. I'm going to let that sink in. Let that marinate a little bit. And some steak sauce. Okay. Let's happily, after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him saying this man began to build and was not able to finish it. You don't want nobody to talk about you like that. She's going to build a house. What, what happened? The foundation is there and it had been sitting there a month. Two months. What's going to happen? 
What's and then then after a while they put some more stuff on. Be like, oh okay, she got some. She got the sides in the in the back and it's still the frame. We ain't putting no walls and we just got the wood going. You know how they go, that stuff. And they like what? Okay, they've been sitting at then count up the cows. And before they know anything, the house built, <laughs> but it's somebody else's house. Cause you didn't count up the cost. And the same as discipleship, you got to count up the cost. When you say yes, you better know what you're saying yes to. I know a lot of folks have said yes, and they said never mind. But they think, you know, cause they said yes, and they said never mind. God is gonna bless them beyond measure, nope. Because you're going backwards and backwards and sliding back and think you're still going forward. Your post ain't even the same no more. Because you said yes and now you said no man. He who puts his hand to the plow look back ain't even fit for the kingdom. That's what the word say. It ain't what I said. I'm just telling you what the word said. Hmm, okay. Or what king going to make war against another king sit it not down first and consulted up uh, what consulted? Did we say talk to somebody? What? Whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand. What tw wait, okay, I got ten thousand. He got twenty thousand. Or oh, we what we gonna do? We gonna go out there and bust their head. That what we gonna whoa, 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 wait a minute. Okay, dude. How are we going to do this? What you mean? We got enough ammo. We got enough. But they get. Oh, wait. <laughs> we got 10,000. We got 20,000. Well, get in here 300. You better make sure God send them home and not you. So you better be ready to. You got to count up the calls. When you going out there to minister, count up the calls. Can you handle folks? Look at <laughs> Can you have? I don't, I don't really know about Jesus. I don't know about stairs. I be looking for the stairs. I'm like, you You got a two story? What man you talking about? I know the man. I said, does the man know you? You got to be ready to get mad. Y'all be ready to fight when folks get mad. Oh, wait a minute. You, out, you supposed to be out there trying to win folks. That's the cost of discipleship. Everybody ain't going to like you, boo. No. Your church folks ain't gonna like you. Cause you tell it like it is. But then you got to live it like you tell it. Uh oh, did I say yeah, I said, yeah. You you can't say you got to live what you talking about. You did in the world. Why 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 is it a problem in the church? Oh, do you still that? Okay. All right. I'm just, I just asked the question. Just, but we get to, there we don't. Or else, here we go, something else. While the other is yet a great way off, he sent an ambassage, uh, ambas, um, am, ambassador, whatever they call it, and desired conditions of peace. Do you really want to face 20,000 with your 10,000? Huh? You say, eh, wait, um, let's get some cows and some bullocks and some 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 some, some, bulls and some burst or burst and uh send the beat the people the, the negotiator and the consulars and the and, and the sweet people and send them down there and see if we can work this thing out. But now God gonna be ready. Man. Cause I'm bad like that. Right. The devil was the devil was ready for us. No, it wasn't. It wasn't no devil. No, mm -mm. Hey, hey here. It wasn't no devil waiting. You should have went out there. You knew you had ten thousand people. You knew they had twenty thousand. And like JJ say, and I'm gonna rephrase a little bit, twenty thousand goes into ten thousand as many times as they want to. So you, we're not, mm -mm, that wasn't the devil. You went on out there. But if God, you don't have a Gideon experience, 32,000, God said, uh, oh, too many. Send 10,000 home, 22,000, you still got two. What you mean? 
It's a bunch of them. You, hey. He put his face in the water, sent him home. The one that get on one knee and scoop, you keep them. 300. But God already had, the, it was a fixed fight. God already had that plan. But if God don't work through you and tell you what to do, don't you go nowhere. Jesus would know. Paul would know. Who you? Then you come out crazy. Show there's a rough world out there. Yeah, it is. We were trying to tell you why you went out there. You ain't count the cause, bro. Sis, people, preacher. Mm, you got to count up the call. You got to know what you're getting into. When you go out in the street, you got prayed. You got to be prayed up, stayed up, waked up, and all that. All the I'm just, I'm just. You can't go out there, you know, half cocked and trying to figure out and quit arguing with folk about the word. You can't win nobody arguing. I know it's supposed to be arguing. But you can't win like, no, you have to tell them what the words say. They don't want to hear what's shake the dust off uh, as a testimony against it and keep it moving, boo. Keep it moving. God got somebody else. And like I told you, if they don't hear you, be like, uh-huh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh-huh, I hear you, yeah, okay. Um, they don't want to receive the word. They don't, uh-uh. That's the cause of discipleship. One plant one water, but who God gives the increase. You ain't gonna do it all, all the time. We're supposed to be in a partnership. Partnership. That's another sermon at another appointed round. <laughs> partnership. That's the cause. Okay. It says, so likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, can he cannot me me be my disciple. If you don't forsake everything, I want all of you or none of you. That's what the Lord's saying. I don't want to, I'm not your weekend lover. I'm not your part-time lover. I'm not your pimp. Prostitute, or what you want to pick me up when you want some? You ain't got nothing to say when you just nah. I'm gonna be it or none of it. This next one gonna get a little sticky because I, I I preached a message on it and it's it's kind of funny that um a friend of mine sent me the message. <laughs> Hmm. Salt is good. Y'all know that you, you, you know we be liking some salt. And some of us like to season salt. We we forget about regular salt. We want a little seasoning up in now. And put a little pepper. Okay, we're talking about salt though. Salt is good. But if the salt has lost its savor. Wherewith shall it be seasoned? I had preached a message one time. Are you salt or just salty? Are you good or good for nothing? Do you bring flavor or you make it bitter? Are you salt or just salty? And you know when stuff salty, we be Oh, I need some water. I need something to drink. Don't be salty. When you come, people come, you come around people, people like, because you salt. But if you salt, they be like, this girl, she, she can't, he can't. Oh, there you go. Ooh, what are they going to talk about today? What are they going to say? What they, oh, man, yeah. That's salt. But if you salty, you done lost your savor. You done lost your savor. You done lost your anointing. As my Bishop Wimbush used to say. Oh, well, he probably still said, I'm sorry, he's still laughing. But anointing. You got to keep it together. You got to keep it together because if you lose it, you got to go back and get it again. 
But if you stay with God, you won't lose. It said it is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill. But men cast it out. They don't even want to have nothing to do with it. If it ain't, the salt don't work no more, they just, uh. Because when salt gets set up and the moisture gets in it sometimes, and then it gets lumpy and dumpy and crumpy, it, you don't be like, right. what is this? No, I got to go get some more salt. And that's what happens. When you all dusty and crusty and ain't praying and ain't where you need to be in God, you, you get lumpy. You get dumpy. And folks just say, hey, I don't want them no more. They ain't good for nothing. So make sure that you're salt. Salt is a preserver. Salt makes stuff taste good. Or better. What are you doing? Do you make people's life better? Or are they bitter? <gasps> oh, did I say that out loud? Yes, I did, proud of it. What you gonna do? Mm hmm Yeah. It said, he that hath ears to hear. Let him hear. Are you listening? It calls. It calls Jesus. His life. It calls Peter. His life. It calls James and John. Well, yeah, their life. Are you willing to lose your life for Christ? Are you? Are you willing to lose your your dignity? And when I say dignity, I'm like, you know, some people just ready to drag you through the mud. Because you chose Jesus. Can you handle it? Huh? In this world, you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be talked about. Don't be cr They talked about me. And they talked about Jesus. Man, you. They say. <laughs> all they saying about you. He always talking about Jesus. I always got some. I always going to church. I always. Every time you see, she's saying something about the Lord. That's all they're saying. They call Jesus the devil. Did they call you the devil? Well, some people may. But uh, you, got to, you got to be ready. Some folk in the church going to talk about you, boo. You got to be ready. That's the cause. Everybody that go to church, newsflash, ain't saved. Everybody go to church, newsflash, ain't delivered. Newsflash, everybody go to church, ain't honest. Count them the cause. How big are you when you walk? Do you walk with power? Or do you walk like you don't know? Because like I said, when you don't know and you're trying to act like you know, they're going to be like, hey, 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 Jesus we know. But there's something missing with you. Who are you? Get whooped. They're going to whoop you naked. It's in the word. Whoop them out their clothes. It sound like nakedness to me, don't it? Mm-hmm. Count up the cost. Count up the cost. Okay. Practical points. Crowds may follow, but not all are seeking spiritual things. Woo! Seek God's wisdom. Watch who trying to follow you. Everybody ain't trying to get Jesus. They're trying to get what you got. She get oh, let's see, um, trying to get close to you, so they can buy twenty dollars. Trying to get close to you to see if they can get a date. Oh, did I say that? Uh huh. Trying to get close to you to see if they can bring you down. Watch your crowd. Personal. Discipleship. What personal? Yes, personal. It starts with you first. 
requires godly priorities and personal sacrifice. It ain't about you. When you gave your life to Christ, that's what you did. Gave your life to Christ. Just like you give your life to that man or that woman, you got to do it with Christ. Uh, yeah, you did. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Personal discipleship. You got to start with you. You got to get you straight. I can't be limping with a cane trying to tell you how to walk straight. I can't do that yet because I don't even know. I've been on the cane too long. Huh? Okay, so make sure you're walking straight before you start teaching folks about straightness. Wise disciples understand the cost of a commitment to Christ. Wise disciples. So, uh, if it says wise disciples, there are some unwise disciples, uh huh? Like the ten virgin. Five are wise and five are foolish. You can't take everybody with you everywhere you go. Sometimes you have to say, Lord, who do I need to take with me? And sometimes God will call out folks only, you only speak to. Them, Lord, they got quiet. <laughs> Until you put them into play. Then you be like, what? Is it? Mm -hmm. Cost of commitment. Do you really know what the word commit means? Just think about that. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do no more talking. Just think about that. Commit. God wants us to follow him in faith while understanding the seriousness of the commitment we have made. It's not like you waking up to my, okay, I'll, I'll be over there in about five, ten minutes. No, when you make a commitment to Christ, it's for life. Did I say life? Yes, I said life. He committed to you for life. Why you can't be committed to him for life? Commitment. Hmm. Disciples should use wise strategy to advance the kingdom of God, wise strategy. And where do you get that wisdom from? If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Mm -hmm. You got to get the wisdom from the all wise God. You can't get it from, you know, you, you, you can get it from people that, you know, you can get some help. You can get some assistance. But to get what God wants you to do, you got to go straight to the source. Mm -hmm. Some people like to be an extension cord. Or should I say plugged into an extension cord. They get the power from the extension cord who gets the power from the source. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about those people that try to leech on you. Hey, Pastor Lindsay. They leech on you and bleed you dry of your Holy Ghost and your blessings. They try to get what you got. But baby, you can try all you want to. You're not going to get what I got unless you get what I, get what I got. <laughs> yeah, I said that. You can't get what I got unless you get what I got. That's the only way you're going to be able to get it. All right? Okay. What's for me is for me. What's for you is for you. You can't take mine. You can only take yours. All right? We should guard our character and conduct so we remain qualified to serve. My God, we should guard our character. I would tell them, you know, one time when I was teaching, I said, I protect my spirit. You need to protect your spirit. You can't talk to everybody at church. What? What you mean? Get, speak and move. Sometimes stuff be going crazy in church. I walk right out the door. I say, uh-uh. I get go. I say, see y'all. I do a corporate wave. See y'all. Go get in my car and go home. Some stuff break out in the sanctuary. 
talk a lot. Uh uh, God, I got to stick up. So I go. I got to protect what God has blessed me with, what God allowed me to have, what God allowed me to keep. I got to protect it. I protect it with my life. I don't listen to everybody. I don't hang out with everybody. I don't go everywhere with everybody. Most of the time, it's just going to be me. Why? Because everybody can't speak to me. Everybody can't, can't speak into my life. Because I'm very protective of my life. Because what you're giving me is precious. I can't let nobody tamper with it. I can't let nobody contaminate. So don't be mad if I act a little off. A little bougie as you may say. I'm okay. I'm just protecting God's investment. I want to be qualified to serve. Everywhere I go I'm ready for, what, for whatever. Because sometimes the pastor may not know me, but a member may. And they will go whistle to the pastor. Next thing I know, I'm called up to do something. I got to be ready. I ain't ready to pray. What you been doing? I ain't ready to preach. What you been doing? I ain't ready to... What you doing? It calls to be a disciple. And now, if you, I ain't got to the preacher... The preacher pastor thing. I ain't got there. I'm just talking about the disciple. disciple. Now you know, if it costs you. To be a student. And let me help you out. I don't care what your title is. You're always a student. You can be a teacher. And still be a student. Because you will forever be at the feet of Jesus. Time you get up, you miss your connection. Stay at his feet. The cost may be great. The cost may hurt. But I promise you, it's worth it. I tell people all the time, a peace of mind is priceless. Be distressed is priceless. Count the cost. I said, God, I'm yours. Fix me. Get my mind right. This mouth, look, hit him. Okay. My face, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Uh, not much, but I'm, I'm beyond. Because my face is talk for my mouth, say something. Because I be talking to my, <laughs> she on here now, my co worker. Be talking to her. And my face say stuff. <laughs> and she said, Vans, stop. <laughs> I said, oh, I'm so scared. She said that frying, that fat, that, because I talk, my face talk for my mouth. So I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But we got to count the cost. God wants some bold soldiers. He don't need nobody when stuff going on and you need to speak and God done told you what to say. Mm -mm. He wants you to talk. He wants you to say something. He wants you to speak. So, if you haven't done it, let's do that right now. Counter cost. Say, God, I need you to prepare me. Prepare me. Get me straight. Get me together. Get my mind right. Get my ears right. Get my thoughts right. Lord, help me to be bolder. Help me to stand on your word, live your word, do your word, breathe your word, sleep your word, wake up your word. I want to be the soldier you need me to be. Let's count the cost. Stop shortchanging God. He didn't shortchange you. Let's give it all to him. All right? He'll take care of the rest. But seek ye first. But seek ye first. All this God take take care of everybody and everything. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things shall 
all shall be added. Take care of God. And he'll take care of you. I promise you. I'm a witness. That he'll take care of you. Alright. Okay. Next week's lesson. Oh Lord. Oh. The title is. Uh, forgiveness. Faith. And service. What? Yeah, that, that's what I said. Forgiveness, faith, and service. It's our last lesson in this court. It's going to be Luke 17, 1 through 10. Luke 17, 1 through 10. Well, we've come to an end of another good, fantabulous lesson. I hope I said a lot. That you agree with. If not, you'll be okay. But I hope I said something to help everybody tonight. I know I helped myself. I, I was shouting on the inside. I don't know if y'all can see it or not, but that was that was <laughs> yeah. okay. But anyway, I love y'all. Oh, uh, ain't nothing y'all gonna do about it. And so, you know, when you think about it, you're gonna do something about the way I love you, think again. Cause I love you. And you can do nothing about it. Till next week. See ya.